Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says the federal government is putting plans in place to tax the profits made in Nigeria by global technology firms. I'm talking about the likes of Google, Facebook and Twitter if the suspension is lifted. The vice president said this at a meeting with a delegation from the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, according to its spokesman, Lao Luakonde. Now, joining us to discuss this is Mr. Fashuto, and he is the former president of the uh, Chartered Institute of Taxation in Nigeria. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fulusho Fashuto. Good morning, good morning, viewers. All right. Um, first things first, what's the justification for this move by the president or by the vice president? Is the government empowered to widen its tax net to tech companies? You know, the, the former uh, the vice president uh, actually talked about the Finance Act, saying it enables the government to do so. But is that a fact? That is a fact. Uh, section 13, subsection 2 of the Communist Income Tax Act um, was amended by Finance Act of 2019. Uh, section, section 4 of that uh, Finance Act specifically amended it to include the income of uh, a digital tech giant to be taxed in Nigeria uh, based on certain threshold and the threshold are specified in the act. So it's now legal for government to uh, tax the profits of these uh, tech giants. So t t tell us about the, the thresholds you're mentioning uh, now. Um, how, how do they do this if they don't have an office here? Uh, that's, that's been the argument for a lot of people um, um, who have responded to this. If they don't have an office here, they don't sell an actual product here in Nigeria, um, how do you tax them? And what's the threshold you've just mentioned? Well, the, the, the Act specify that uh, the threshold for the non-resident uh, companies will be gross turnover or income in excess of 25 million naira in a given year or its equivalent in other currencies. Or if such company uses a Nigerian domain name that is .ng or registers a website in Nigeria, or it has a purposeful and sustained interaction with persons in Nigeria, by customizing its platform to target persons in Nigeria. For example, by reprises of products or services in Naira. Those are the thresholds. Now, the question is, how will Nigeria now uh, uh, bring into its net the profit attributable to this Nigerian taxation? I believe that this is an area that uh, the Federal Inland Revenue Service has to work upon uh, because some of these organizations, they don't have any presence in Nigeria. And uh, some of them, they even deal directly with individuals in Nigeria without going through any government channel at all. So the FRS may need to enforce compliance and uh, to do this, they may need international consensus. Fortunately, Nigeria is one of the over 109 countries that signed the Common Reporting Standards, uh, whereby they exchange information with the other countries so as to get information regarding those people who are liable to Nigerian tax. So with this, provision with this amendment to tax law, it will be easier for government to identify these incomes. But for collectability purpose, they will need assistance of other countries to do this. Exactly, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fashito. 
Um, your last point really was where I was, I was going to. Even if you've mentioned the facts that the Finance Act amended, you know, empowers the Nigerian government to expand its tax net and include, you know, tech giants, people who are providing digital services in the country. But the issue would be, first of all, the Finance Act does not even specify how the government would go ahead to do this. So how can the federal government begin to ensure compliance? How can they enforce this new law? You know, because you mentioned that Nigeria is a signatory to some of these um, international treaties, but doesn't it sound easier? you know, than, than being done? Well, we know that uh, we are now in the era of non, uh, knowledge economy. And uh, a lot of money is changing hands in this particular realm of economy. If government fails to recognize this, it will be a disaster. A uh, 1,000 mile journey starts with the first step. Yes, the enabling environment has now been created by amending the law to include this particular profit. Then, secondly, Nigeria has already signed treaty with other countries to provide information to disabled persons. Just like Nigeria should be able to provide information to other countries. Uh, regarding those people who to pay taxes in those other countries. So with this exchange of information, with the statutory provision, then with infrastructures being put in place, I believe that Nigeria, just like other advanced countries, should be able to track down these profits attributable to Nigerian taxation. But it will require cooperation with other countries, as I said earlier on. So it's not, it's not, it's currently not um, possible, but what you're saying is that it can be done. So there has to be extra effort. There has yes. to be um, soliciting of uh, support from other countries and some of all of that. So the Nigeria, Nigeria needs to go through all of that to simply be able well, to sure. tax these, these companies. So um, do you, do you agree that it's a step that we should be taking as a country? Because... Some of these tech giants that we're, we're speaking about now have been extremely beneficial to the Nigerian people. Um, and um, they've, they've created a space where the Nigerian people have been able to do business, have been able to solve crimes, have been able to gather information, have been able to get jobs. Um, so do you think that this would be beneficial, uh, that the Nigerian government needs to go ahead and find ways to make them pay for the services that they've rendered to the Nigerian people? We believe it's the right step in the right direction because the countries of origin of these tech giants, they don't joke with taxation. They tax the incomes of these tech giants. It means that if such profits should help taxation in Nigeria, there is possibility that such profits may be taxed in the countries. So that means that Nigeria, what ought to have been Nigerian income by way of taxation has been going to these countries, other countries. But with this law in place and with the right tests to be taken by the government, we believe that we will need to call back what belongs to Nigeria as its own income. There is no way we can continue depriving ourselves as to our rightful income by way of taxation just by not anything. We need to take steps. These other countries make proclamation that if any American company or taxable person is having accounts in your country, you're supposed to disclose uh, uh, the details to them. And if you fail to do so, they will deny you same benefits that you can derive from America. So why can't Nigeria also do the same thing? So it's not a punitive measure, but is the rightful income of the government and is a right step in the right direction. We only hope that government will assiduously pursue this. They have made the, the government has made the law. They had signed relevant agreements then they should take practical steps 
to approach, to engage these other countries to disclose uh, the identities of these tech giants that are making incomes for Nigeria. Okay. Is rightful revenue belonging to Nigeria? Yes, so, Mr. so, so Mr. Fashato, this revenue we're talking about, how do you think it will affect uh, Nigeria's economy? Do you think, you know, we're going to get a lot from this tax? Or do you think this would, you know, drive out business? I doubt if it will drive out business in the sense that these tech giants are not new to taxation. It's a thing that, you know, that is operative in their home countries. They are quite aware of it. Even some of them have been taking advantage of our low tax regime in Nigeria mm. by deploying their resources to Nigeria, where we are not taking note of our rightful income. But with this approach, I believe that these tech giants should see Nigeria as getting more serious with its economy. And I believe that they should be able to support Nigeria to collect its rightful income. So I don't see it as uh, driving away businesses from Nigeria. It is in this part of the world that we are not so used to paying tax and we believe that is a body. But uh, in other clients, they see it as a way government, uh, governance will be funded. And it's a civic responsibility. So you're basically so saying it's not that, at all. Uh, Mr. Fashion, so you're basically saying that rather than you know these companies reacting negatively, you can foresee them basically complying with the government's order to pay taxes. For sure, they are going to comply. I believe that, but it depends on the seriousness of our government to pursue this to the uh, logical conclusion. Because if government should relax. They too, they will continue their old ways. Hmm. Well, um, is there a possibility of uh, these tech giants now deciding to make a lot of their services or stop, you know, having free services here in Nigeria because of taxation? If uh, they decide that for you to get on those platforms, you have to pay subscription fees, doesn't that affect uh, usage of those platforms here in Nigeria and reduce uh, the availability of those platforms uh, for Nigerians to use? Well, I may not rule out possibility of increase in, the, in their prices, especially those services they, that they currently price. They may likely now incorporate uh, taxes to those services that were being given without taxes before. But I believe that uh, most of them, they are already charging taxes. They are already charging taxes. It's only that they are not remitting it at all. So uh, they, they are going to do the rightful by ensuring that they now account for those taxes they are collecting to Nigerian government. Okay. Um, so it's the right step. Okay. So, Mr. Fashion, right so, uh, I want you to bring in your perspectives on why this whole conversation is starting now. Because regarding tax and digital companies, it's nothing new. When the Finance Act was amended, and you know, we started having these conversations in 2019, 2020, you know, this has been law, right? But the issue was that it was not enforced. So how you know, do you think this issue with the president's tweets being deleted and the Twitter suspension or ban is now influencing you know, this spur to action from the government? It's, it's a, it has been a process. You know, this, this uh, Finance Act was uh, signed in law in year 2020. And uh, in that 2020, come the second quarter, we had COVID-19, which affected uh, governments all over the world. But I believe that government has been putting things in place to ensure this implementation. It's only coincidental that it, uh, it, it's this time that uh, maybe Nigerian government is having with uh, issues with some of the uh, service providers uh, that the implementation is coming. But it has been in the offing and government has been pursuing it. And uh, I, don't see, I don't see any reason why we should read many into why government has to up its revenue. Then, 
you have to understand one thing. Nigeria current economic problems stems from its very, very low revenue yield. Nigerian revenue is very, very low, very, very low. And this is due to revenue leakage that Nigeria government is experiencing. Nigeria is not tapping into all its resources of revenue. And uh, taxing these tech giants is one of the huge uh, source of revenue for government. So Nigeria government is waking up to its responsibilities and it requires support from everywhere, meaning Nigerians. Absolutely. And I believe that these tech giants, um, they absolutely, need to support Mr. the Nigerian government in this Mr. direction. Mr. I, I, I would agree with you on that one, you know, how Nigerians need to support their government, with, you know, when they are trying to improve on their revenue generation. Um, there's many other sectors of government that need to also get, you know, better support in order to improve or find ways that we can make money from them. Mineral resources, tourism, our film industry, uh, there's so much more that, you know, Nigeria can make money from. Agriculture also. Um, but... We don't speak enough about leakages of no. government funds. Uh, you just mentioned it now. Um, if the Nigerian government fails to block leakages of funds, you know, that have continued to just, um, you know, miss out on being sent to government, um, how does this in any way improve on our earnings? Because we're going to continue to lose money if we don't block these leakages. And as we continue to tax left, right, and center, we still would not see the effects of these new levels of taxation if we don't block those leakages. So how come we don't seem to be taking that well, seriously in any way? I think Nigeria government doesn't have choice now to, than to block those leakages. Why is Nigeria just waking up to realize that they need to generate more revenue than is generating? Because oil price has really gone down. We are experiencing oil gloats. So what used to be the major source of government revenue is no longer serving as its major source, but it has gone to the, uh, to the background. And Nigeria still has to carry out its functions through its revenue. So if it fails to block the, the uh, leakages, it will find itself in, in, in a fix. So I believe that government will surely block the leakages. Then they will need to expand the tax base. And this uh, tax of tax giant happens to be one of the means of expanding its tax base. So if it blocks its uh, new leakages and tax those areas that and if that will be taxed, then we will observe that our revenue yield will improve. Then we'll have enough money to prosecute all the government projects. Okay. Well, if and when. Thank you very much, uh, Fulusho Fashoto, for joining us and for speaking with us this morning. And, of course, uh, sharing your thoughts uh, with regards to taxation. We look forward to other conversations with you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Wow, so that was an interesting perspective there from the former uh, president of the Chartered um, Institute of Taxation there. Um, because remember when this, the government announced this Twitter suspension ban, many Nigerians were not happy about it. They say this is a platform that has helped Nigerians in a lot of ways. Why is the government suspending it? But this angle of taxation is totally different. We're talking about avenues to increase our, our revenue, and he's explained that the government really has been slacking in this regard. And the vice president also talked about how Nigeria's tax rates are one of the lowest in the world, so we need to maybe even expand that. If you look at countries like the US, they generate about $55 million yearly in digital services tax. So these countries tax their people. Like he mentioned, these digital tech giants are used to taxation in their home countries and that they have actually been exploiting. These are the words of Mr. Fashoton now that these tech companies have been exploiting the tax leniency in Nigeria and they have to sit up as the government is sitting up too. So yes. um, great perspectives, conversations that should continue as we go on. Remember it's at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Instagram and of course our YouTube channel. Um, so yes, that's where we draw it today.
Yes, uh, the news is up at 9 o'clock. Uh, thanks for staying with us all through the program. I am Osaogi Ogbawan. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye-bye.